Okay guys, so we're gonna start working on the knee cut pass. Uh, the thing with understanding the knee cut pass is it's pretty, um, there's a lot of different variations. So there's not like one version of the knee cut pass. It's different in a lot of different situations. So I'm gonna start off by just kind of defining how a knee cut pass works, and then we're gonna go into a basic variation. Okay, so just kind of loosely explaining it. Uh, a knee cut pass is basically, I'm gonna use my, like, when you're passing the guard to fully pass, I need to get inside of his elbow knee space, right? So keep your elbow knee kind of connected. If I'm here on the outside, right, I can't actually pass the guard, right? For me to pass, I have to be inside here. That's when you actually get points for side control, okay? So a Toriando is like passing from the outside. I would be going around the outside, opening this space and coming in from here. A knee cut, I'm going into that elbow knee space, yeah, like this, right? I'm going into this elbow knee space from the inside, right? So my knee is going up, and I'm using my knee like a nail to go inside that elbow knee space. So rather than going around it from the outside, we're going on the inside to get in, right? Now, for a good knee cut to happen, basically what I'm doing is I'm pinning his lower body by dropping my knee in this space, and then I'm gonna use some method to rotate his upper body the other way. I want him flat. Now that's gonna vary depending on the grips he has. It could be a cross face with my arm. It could be uh, a cross face, like a, a forearm crush like this. It could be my head. It could be an underhook in my weight with my chest. It could be me pulling his elbow up to rotate him. There's a lot of different ways to do it, right? Now what tool you're gonna use, uh, it's gonna be dependent on the grips he has on you, okay? So for example, if I'm in De La Hiva and he's holding my pant leg, right? From here, I can do a knee cut pass, like, like this. But it's very different than like if he has a single leg grip, right, so here, right? If he has like a single leg grip, this is a very different situation. I can still knee cut pass by putting my knee to the floor and grabbing the collar here and doing like a face crank, for example, but it's very different than the previous pass, okay? Now, I could be here and he could be pushing with both hands framing, and now it's very different. Now I have to grab the tricep and finish like this. Okay, so the point with this like this explanation here is to understand that there's not one knee cut pass. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna do the knee cut pass. That's how it works. It's gonna largely depend on the grips the guy has on you, okay? So when I teach it, I have to pick a starting point, right? So if we did the, I could do the De La Hiva, we could do reverse De La Hiva, they're all like a bit different. So we're just gonna start with what I think is like a, a very easy way to start by understanding it is we're just gonna deal with the guy kind of on his back with his feet up like this. So we're gonna enter the guard with the knee cut pass. So this is completely different than if I was in Dale Akiva and he had my ankle, it's a very different thing. Okay, so we're gonna be here, he's got his legs up. We're just gonna start with a simple variation. So um, I'm gonna control his ankles first like this, right? And I'm gonna step over so this foot is aimed in between my legs, right? So I want this stuck in between my legs because if this is out, no knee cut pass can happen. I have to have one leg trapped. Okay, now normally when I do it, I'll control this top leg and enter with the knee here and this completely blocks him from lasso, right? One of the most common things guys will do when you try to pass the guard is they try to lasso their leg. So for example, if I come in here and grab the hill, he's gonna lasso immediately and now I can't pass, right? So by controlling the leg, I can just go in here, drop in and start building my pass, okay? We're gonna get to that, but I'm just gonna start with something a little bit more simple. Okay, what we're gonna do for now is we're gonna control the shins first here. When we're ready to go, we're gonna let go of this I'm just gonna place my palm on his ribs. You lift your foot, and we're gonna drop our knee like a nail right in his armpit, like this, okay? Once we get here, usually the guy will try to push on you with his hands. I'm gonna grab behind the tricep, and now I can just slide my hand to the floor and slide through. Once we get ahead here, and we get ahead of this, the lasso can no longer happen. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they try to block the lasso is they try to go head down like this. So, because people think that's gonna block the lasso. But if someone's hyper flexible here, they can push you and get their foot in front, right? When I get in front here, there's no way to lasso. You see that? It's like there's a wall right here that his leg can't go through, no matter how flexible he is. If my back is here, he can't lasso, right? So again, we're starting here. We just control the shins. We place the hand on the rib. I lift my foot first. So you don't ax your shin down like this. You lift your foot, drop the knee like a nail right in the armpit. We're gonna catch the tricep or elbow. Now I slide through to the floor and we slide through. When I finish, I wanna have my hips in the air and my weight on my ribs on him. Like this, okay? 
So again, one more time. Let's turn this way just to get a different angle. Okay, we're here like this. Lock the ribs. Step up on the foot and drop the knee like a nail. We grab the tricep and slide through here. Okay, guys, we're gonna start with that one and then we'll build a little bit from there. Okay? Any questions? All right, let's go. Okay, guys, so let's look at a couple of common issues that will pop up. Uh, one thing, a common thing I see people do, because it's just taught this way a lot when people learn knee cuts, is they kind of learn it like it's more of a shin slot, shin cut than a knee cut. So it's like they come in here and they kind of drop to the side and drop their shin on the thigh. Has anyone here seen that before? It's pretty common. I've seen it in a lot of instructionals. The issue with this is when you do it, you're just driving this knee shield right into you. How many people have this issue when they try to knee cut and the person knee shielding? It's literally almost everyone, okay? So you come in like this, and when I shin drop here, I'm driving this in, and even if you put your arm in here, he can drive over that, right? That's why I like him to be more centered when I go. Or if he a little bit to the side is okay, but if he's like here, there's no way, right? So when you're here and you go up, and I keep my upper body rotated to the right more, you see that? The more you are this way, like if your hips and upper body are in alignment, which sounds like a good thing, right? You would think you would want those in alignment. Right, it's actually bad for a cut because the more I'm here, the easier it is for him to push me this way with his hands and get the shield in. Right, so when I come in, I'm more like here. You see, now as he tries to shield with this, my upper body can drive this way, and it's easier to go through. Right, and a good good guard pass finish is always going to end chest to chest. Okay, so if I'm here going out this way and I go out here, even if I get out, his He's gonna fight and get on his side and stuff, right? What you want is chest to chest pressure when you finish anything. See, when I'm here and he starts pushing me, see I'm heavy, there's nowhere to go here. I'm on top of his chest, right? It's just like when he did the over under, he ended chest to chest. Okay, so if you do kind of mess up your cut a little bit and you start to get shielded a little bit, usually what I try to do, um, you don't always have to grab this pant leg, you can just leave it on the ground. Go ahead and chill a little bit here. Like this is, I'm just gonna use my knee to center him up a little bit. So just kind of, see I turn there, I get my elbow inside, and then I go forward back to that same position and slide through, okay? Even if he has the crossed arm. Here, like this, he's pulling really tight. I'll just grab some material, the stiff arm, to get some resistance here, right? And I just open, elbow in, right? You don't have to go all the way back. We just go just enough to get the elbow in. Now we go right back to that armpit position and slide through, okay? All right guys, so we're just gonna play around with this and then I'm gonna show another variation uh, if the guy lassos and then we'll do some sparring. All right guys, let's go. One, One more variation, but real quick, I just wanted to mention something. Um, so like, you know, depending on the knee cut you're doing, you're gonna have different responses. So often a lot of people talk about, cause this is like very, like Leandro style knee cut. Um, a lot of people talk about like the active posting thing. The active pose is more, go ahead and hold the pant leg. If like I've been dealing with you and he's holding the pant leg and I hit the cut here, I have to do this to catch balance and I'm dropping my chest weight here. But notice, like that is a specific moment to do that. It's not like you always active pose. If I'm here and he's pressing on me with his hands, we'll put like one on each shoulder like this, he's pushing here and I try to active pose, it's not gonna, I'm just gonna give him an escape. He's gonna, he needs too much room. He's gonna get out, right? So that's what I mean by like when you develop these things, like. I wish it was as easy as, you know, here's how you do a knee cut, and then it's great, you just always do it. But that's not how jiu-jitsu works. If I step in the guard and the guy's in spider guard, right, I can't go, oh, I want to do a knee cut. No, I'm in spider guard, I have to do only the set of options possible if I'm in spider guard. I can't just decide I want to do a knee cut, right? So maybe I have to pop this and try to throw. If I come in and he goes to De La Hiva holding the pant leg, then I'm like, oh, maybe I can do a knee cut. But if he's doing underhook De La Hiva, now I can't knee cut, you can't knee cut this just because you can't, right? So everything just kind of changes, right? So what we're really focusing on now is more the grip fight, right? So Andre showed like the over-under, so you know, we could be here, we could drop and trap and start going into this. I could be here to go for a Toriano, right? or I could be here and start going for a knee cut. That's what we're working on, is the setup from no grips, okay? Um, so let's look a little bit. Um, there's two ways to go about this. I can either go in depth on how to control the pant leg, which is more commonly what I do. So if you control the pant leg, cause like maybe here I'm threatening Toriandos and stuff, right? When I control the pant leg in there, now he can't lasso, right? Like I mentioned before, 
sometimes when you come in like this, the guy lassos beforehand. Right, so he comes in here, he lassos, and now it's hard to finish the knee cut. Okay, so if you go in with a pant leg, he can't lasso, but now he might try to underhook you, and we gotta learn how to deal with that. If you go in with the grip on the lapel, he might lasso here, and then we have to learn how to deal with that. Okay, so I'll let you guys pick. Do you wanna do the pant grip so they can't lasso and learn to deal with the underhook, or do you guys wanna do the lapel grip and learn to kill the lasso? Your choice. You want to let them get the lasso and come in. Okay, cool. All right. So this, yeah, perfect. This is more Lapree style. So in this case, we come in, right? Again, I'm a, I want to dominate this leg. So we're going to grab the lapel. When he goes, it's a lasso here. Okay, I don't want him to go deep with it in this case. So what I'm going to do is I kind of frame this up by opening my elbow. I want to make sure my grip on this leg is really good. So when I, when I can tell we've switched into the lasso game, I like to circle my hand on the inside of the ankle. Because often what happens is if I stay here, his foot can loop back in and we get into this game, right? When I'm on the inside, see so loop back in, he's stuck out, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my body under this. Now it's really hard to get that last one back, okay? Now this gets a little bit more involved because if he's really flexible, he might get stacked and then I have to start going this way and that's a different pass. Okay, but loosely what you can do as I grab the lapel, I come in, he lassos, we check it, and we come under it. So if it's in a bit here, we just lift our elbow, bring our body in, right back to the same position, pull, and go through. Okay, one more time. Okay, so we're here, I feel that lasso coming. See how I meet it by dropping and lifting? Right? Again, and you know it's gonna come too, he only has a few set of options. So if you're doing this, you know he's probably gonna do this, right? So again, we're here, so I go, I feel the lasso come. I come, you see I kind of turn out to the side, drop there, lift my elbow, I control this well, I get on the inside, step over, and drop that knee into the same position. Okay, but it's the same finished position. Once I'm here, if I have the lapel, sometimes I don't have to place the hand on the floor, I can just control the lapel and kind of drop my elbow out. Same idea though, my body's in front of the leg. Okay guys, one more time. Here. Pull the lapel, he the lasso, and lock, head under, step over the leg, knee in, grab the elbow, and slide. Cool? Alright guys, any questions? What is the purpose of this control? Like why, why have the lapel? Well, yeah. Uh, it can serve a lot of purposes later on. Like I potentially, if I get stuck in the position more or if he switches to Dale Hiva, I can pull him up. Um, if he starts to play, like, say he gets the position out and he goes to collar sleeve here, like he has a lasso first, right? Right, and he gets this in the bicep, now we're playing collar sleeve. Having this lapel gives me like an attachment, so it's harder for him to play the collar sleeve game. Um, also, like when I, uh, when I open up here, like this, it gives me an attachment. If I don't have a grip here, I just feel like, I don't have any, my hand can get pushed over here. So it just kind of anchors me in one spot, right? So I'm here, drop, and slide. Cool. All right, guys, let's try it. One, two, three. So closing thoughts. Um, so again, I was just focusing on the knee cut from no grips, right? And I just gave you guys some loose ideas on how to do that with the lapel grip or the hand on the ribs. But understand it's just very different in every situation. I wish it, from a teaching perspective, I wish it wasn't. It would be way simpler for me to be like, this is how you do it, and you always do it. That's just not how it is, okay? But um, one concept, I think, just to understand about the knee cut in general, is that idea of getting your knee in the kind of like elbow knee space in here, and then finding some way to turn the guy. Once you understand that, you know, you'll be able to start figuring things out sometimes on your own, right? So just a cool, couple cool ways that can pop up. Like one thing I like to do is like if I'm doing a Toriando, Often what will happen is when you pass, the guy will frame with this arm on your shoulder, right? So over here, yeah, frame here, right? So uh, he'll frame here, right? And I know that stays, so you see all that weight on my arm? Look, that opens this gap up big time, right? Because sometimes guys are super tight with their arm, so if I try to come in for the knee, it's not there. The space isn't there, right? But if I'm here like this and I hit here, he's got a frame. He just stays super tight, so he's super tight with your arm. Look, he's just giving me the pass, right? So he's got a frame. So when he frames, bang, I just leave my weight on that, Right, and look, right in the space. Now I can dig through, right? Another cool one, sometimes when the guy's sitting up for a grip fight, like this, right? I'm here, if I go like this, I see he's looking for my sleeve, right? I'll just bait this up, so he goes to the sleeve, that opens there, and 
and that's right there, right? So once you understand that space, that's what you're looking for. If we're in De La Hiva, he's got the ankle for the pants, I don't want the See, I need to just open this space, there's the angle, and you go through. Right, now of course, you have to understand the details as you go through in the different positions, but that's roughly the idea, okay? All right, guys, uh, we'll probably do a few more classes on the knee cut and go into more specific situations like the uh, single leg. I think that's a big one. Like, um, basically when we're here and the guy either has a single leg or he like wraps your back. Has anyone had someone do this? Yeah. Where they're out there? Yeah, we'll go more in depth on that in another class, okay? So let's just do a little bit of specific training. And I think what we can do for the specific training maybe is start like in a knee shield like this. Okay, and just do the best you can to try to center the guy up and get through, okay? All right, guys, get some water, get ready to train. One, two, three.